All right, well, we're going to start today and uh, talk about reloading center fire rifle cartridges. I got a bunch of uh, 556 or 223. Uh, actually, those are different, slightly different cartridges. Those are uh, principally 556 uh, cases. And uh, these are once fired cases that I picked up at the range uh, after we did some shooting. And so we're going to prepare these things and take them all the way through making them into uh, new cartridges once again. Uh, a lot of folks are new to reloading, I know that, and uh, I've been doing reloading for uh, about 30 years, uh, so I'm going to try to share with you some hints and tips to uh, help you create some very accurate, high precision type of uh, cartridges that you can shoot, and that's going to cost you a whole lot less than, uh, uh, than you'd ever get at the stores. So uh, one of the things that's very important with uh, reloading is to keep very, very good records. So I have already started my records here on the date, the cartridge, and the uh, quantity, and I organize my, uh, my journal by the cartridge that I'm reloading. And the, one of the first things we're going to do is we're going to take these, uh, these cases, these once-fired cases, and we're going to inspect each one of them. Wipe them down, get the stuff off of them. You don't want dirt and grime going into the reloading dies that we'll have on here later on and uh, inspect them inspect them for any um, nicks big dings uh, bend uh, bends in the cartridge uh, case itself a little bit of a ding in the case body I don't really worry about that too much where I get very concerned is stuff up on the shoulder of the case up on the shoulder of the case as I said I don't really get too concerned about some small uh, dimples that may be in the uh, case body that might uh, be caused during extraction on some AR-15s. This case right over here looks fine for the first step. The other thing that I do is I take a, this is a transistor, raw, a transistor that I opened up and I feel inside here you could do the same thing with um, a paper clip that's been opened up a little bit of a bend been placed in it here and I reach down inside and I feel on the inside around this area here uh, sometimes you'll if you detect any sort of a nick or, or anything that catches that means that you have what's called an incipient uh, head separation and this thing's going to come apart in two pieces if you've done several loads on them or a very hot load uh, so you feel inside there and uh, and just do that step I'm going to run through about 80 of these things, inspecting all of them as I go. Uh, and, and a lot of times with these 5.56s, I'll lose about 10% uh, just because I'm extremely particular about the quality of the case that goes into the next set of reloads. Now this case here, this uh, dent in the body, this is a no-go. There's no way you're going to be able to get that, th that thing fixed. So uh, that's irreparable. It's trash. Now here's a case that I don't like. It isn't going to make it into the load. You can see a, uh, a bend or a dent right there on that, uh, just below the shoulder, right there. I don't like that. You know, there's some other dings in it right here. It's getting pretty large in the body. Um, if that was the only thing, it might be okay. But this one, this one isn't going to cut it, so I'm going to toss this one. See this one here, a lot of folks say, oh, i got to throw that out because it has a dent right on the mouth itself. It's nowhere close to circular anymore. I'll, I'll, this is a, otherwise a very, very nice case. Um, I don't see any problems with it. It's been annealed, so that's fine. Um, but it's a very, very good case. The only problem is that. And uh, we'll hold on to this one. It'll run through the process. We'll see how well it reforms during the resizing and oftentimes that's going to be just fine. It'll, uh, that resizing process will make it uh, near perfect again. All right, so I got through this, uh, this pile of brass uh, and this time my discard ratio, the number I'm throwing away is, is quite a bit. There's 37 that ended up bad and I kept 80. So, you know, I'm, I'm uh, I'm getting close to 50% in this case. Usually it's not that bad. Uh, I'm very particular, as I said, though, about what brass goes back into the gun uh, as a reloaded cartridge. When you have this many uh, cartridges that you're doing, this, this process of looking for the incipient uh, head fractures or head separations 
uh, can be done just as a batch process also, much faster than, than all that handling. Uh, if you're doing a few cartridges, you can uh, change it up a little bit.